quite a coincidence, us running into one another like this. Come on, tell me the truth. Let's what? not talk shop. Let's put on something more inspirational. Why not? can be beautiful. This is no time to be discussing politics. And here she is in the gorgeous flesh, Fiona Fullerton. <laughs> Lyman. <laughs> Fiona. It's so depressing because you haven't changed. Have, have, you, got, have you got a horrible picture in your attic or something? Is it the picture of Dorian tiny. Fullerton? <laughs> I wish. No, that was 12 years ago. My God. So I haven't seen it for 12 years, that clip. But you remembered the line, because as you heard it played back there, the bubbles have tickled my... Tickled my Tchaikovsky. Mm. Well, because 12 years ago, I didn't get the gag when I was filming it, but I do now. <laughs> and have you got a favourite Bond? A favourite Bond? Sean Connery, yeah. you mean? Yeah. Well, no, I just wonder if you've got a oh, favourite no, Bond. I, I think Pierce Brosnan is a sensational Bond. But if you mean films, I mean, I think uh, live and let... Live or Live and Let Die, that was one oh, of the best. Oh, the first Roger Moore, Live and Let Die, yes. It could be Live and Let Live. <laughs> now, live and Let Die. You're known, of course, That's for... That's how much I know. You're known for film work, TV work, with Nigel Hayes and the Charmer, but you've <clears> done an awful lot of theatre work, and you're on, on stage next week back in London again. German yeah. theatre? Yeah, it's my first time back on stage in two years since my daughter was born. Well, I'm doing a little review with a great friend of mine called Robert Meadmore. It's a little musical review, about 28 great songs. The show's called It Takes Two, and it's in the most wonderful little theatre. I don't know if you've been to German Street. It's a tiny little theatre, so it's a bit more like cabaret. It's a very, very intimate space. And I have never worked in that sort of environment before, so it's quite... So it's just you and Robert? Just me and Robert. So you've got a picture here to look at of the entire cast, then? Where? That's it. <laughs> just you two. Ooh. And how many songs is it, Fiona? That's my sucking in the cheeks look. look. Fiona, <laughs> you don't need to suck in your cheeks, baby, do you? Be honest now. <laughs> how many songs is it in the play? About tw 28 numbers we're doing, something like that. It's a big mixture of music. It's not all songs from shows. It's I'm singing some Alison Moyet, I'm singing Gershwin, there's some Irving Berlin, and there's some uh, Paul Simon. I mean, it's all quite, it's an eclectic mix of old and new. It's really good. And Robert has a sensational voice. He's done a lot of West End musicals. I did a few musicals in the early 80s. Uh, and he asked me if I, would, if I wanted to do this little show with him. And I said, well, yeah, why not? But as well as um, treading the boards at the theatre, you're also TV presenting at the moment, or very soon, anyway, for Granada yes. Sky? Yes, I've got my own series on Granada called Fiona Fullerton Style Guide. <laughs> don't laugh. It's about... It's about... They didn't, it. they didn't laugh when you said it, but as soon as they don't laugh, they think, oh... It's, um, it was a bit of a surprise to be asked to present a series, I have to confess, because I've never done that before, but it's about interior design, which is a hobby of mine, really. I've been designing and decorating houses for about 20 years, and I write about it in various magazines, design magazines, about um, interior design and architecture and gardening and things like that, because I enjoy it, and suddenly they asked me to present this series, and it's, it starts um, next week. Now, you started acting, I think, at, what, 11? Mm -hmm. With Mark Lester in, was it Run Wild? Or was that? Was it 12 years that? ago. 12 years ago, yes. But you've also written and presented and stuff. Is that what keeps you interesting in the acting, or is acting what you really enjoy? I like a bit of everything, really. I mean, I think that the more diverse my career, the more interesting it is. If I was just doing theatre, then I think ultimately one, be one becomes very bored of that. I like the fact that I've been able to cross to TV and films but now I'm doing a lot of writing for various newspapers and magazines, and I'm presenting. I do a lot of voiceovers for, Taking for the radio. Weekends, stacking shows I do at the bar mitzvahs, Panto. washing, supermarkets, <laughs> the whole gamut. And you're also a mum, of course. You've got two children, I have two children, James and Lucy. Would you like them to be actors? No, no, not Why in not? a million years. Well, it's you know, I don't know what you feel, but it's a very tough profession, and it's a very insecure business to be a part of. I've been fairly lucky. But uh, my career's had its ups and downs and highs and lows, like everybody's. But uh, 
I don't know. I think Lucy's only two years old, so I don't know what she's going to be when she's, she's going She's got up. nine years before she can start a career as well, you did, Exactly. I know, it's frightening, isn't it? Nine years. But I, I hope she'll be something a little bit more sensible than an actress. Now, we've seen you as a Bond girl, and you might be meeting up with one of the new Bond girls soon. Mm, the, well, yes. One of the commissions I've just received is from the Daily Telegraph to interview the new Bond girl, a leading lady called Michelle Yeo. And I'm going to interview her in a couple of weeks' time, so that'll be very interesting. Have you seen the new Bond movie, Tomorrow Never Dies? Because no, we're going to run I'm a couple of it next week. Oh, are you? Yeah. Well, I, I believe it's excellent. I'm going to see it shortly. So I just wonder how quickly it is that those Bond girls get their kit off, because we did our sums, and I think... <laughs> oh, yeah. I think your character had the record, because it was Quickest. like 27 seconds between... and a half seconds, wasn't it? Was it? Between meeting Roger and getting in the tub yeah, with Roger. I know. <laughs> how many days were you working on that film? Oh, about two. That was it, was it? <laughs> I would say in and out, but you might mistake my meaning, no. might you, Fiona? <laughs> no, it was more than two days. I was on the film about two weeks. But I mean, I wasn't one of the main Bond girls in the movie. I just had a, you know, I was only one of the subsidiary characters. But it was great fun to do. I loved every minute of it. But the best bit of the film is actually not making the film. It's promoting the film afterwards. Because they fly you all around the world to promote the film. So I went everywhere from Rio de Janeiro to Sydney talking about the films. Well, I'm glad you stopped off here tonight for us and good luck with the play. It opens next week. It's called It Takes Two and it's mm -hmm. on at the German Theatre. German Street Theatre. Fiona Fullerton, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Coming up, more from Beth Alton, of course. We've got Sue Lloyd, Barbara Brady from Crossroads. But in part two, Wesley Snipes. Yup, he starred in... I said, that, I said you've done so many things, but you how, what make it sound like I'm dead. <laughs> really? <laughs> Let me take your pulse, baby. And I'll just check. <laughs> what do you put in your passport, Amanda? When it says like occupation, how would you describe what you do? I wanted to put star, but you're not allowed to, so it just says artist. But you see, you Actual. are a star. Even I'm wearing my little age ribbon. We've got Peter Blake on the show later on talking about World AIDS Day. You've got, of course, a jewelled yes. AIDS ribbon. It's cuter. I bought it in London. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned Salvador Dali. And you did spend a number of years with yeah. Salvador and even yeah. wrote a book about the man. Yes. What was he like, apart from being potty? <laughs> he wasn't potty, but he was very clever and uh, he was a great artist. And uh, I was at art school myself. I wanted to become a painter. So I, when I met him, obviously, the first thing was, you know, to say, hey, oh, you're the greatest painter, you know, and uh, I'm, I also want to be a painter, so nice to meet you. And he immediately stopped me and he said, <gasps> woman, I have no talent. This is a man thing. Oh, so I said, well, that's nice. I'm doing art school, you know, I want to be a painter. He said, no, 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 it's not for women, it's for men. Women cannot paint, and blah, blah, blah. And so I thought the man is absolutely uh, dreadful. I thought he's really a horrible man, you know. I didn't want to see him again. But you did see him again. But we've got and a, a, I did see him again. A couple of wonderful <laughs> pictures of you with him. Look at this one first. And there you ah, are. you would pick that one, Paul. Well, it's, yes, it spoke to my depth, Amanda. Now, that picture was taken by Yul Brynner, and uh, he was while I was posing for a big painting, as you see on the right. Oh, you weren't going in, shopping or anything then? No, no, I was posing in, in, right. the, in Spain, in the north of Spain, Cadaqués. As you see, I was quite slim. Well, you're, you're not chubby now, are you? And it's no, a very glamorous chop you're wearing. Have you, forgotten to put your t have you forgotten to put your blouse on, Amanda? What is no, all that? <laughs> It's just that I, I put on a bit of weight, you know, as I got older. And we've got another photograph of you two of you together, I think, as well, we can look at. Ah, oh, That's much more natural place, I was isn't cute. It? Wasn't I cute? It's a real 60s girl. Was there the kind of madness around Salvador that there was, say, around Andy Warhol? Yes, because people were terribly attracted to him. Uh, you know, the whole pop world, the music world, the Beatles, uh, Ringo Starr, John Lennon, they all wanted to meet Salvador Dali because they all s thought that he was... He, he had some kind of secret, you know, about life and about creativity, and they wanted to meet him. And so Dali's um, had sort of caught, wherever he was, in New York or in Paris, he always had millions of people around him. And there was hangers-on, there was, you know, people who were not mm, very interesting. But also he had this ability to attract talented people. You, like said, you mentioned Ward. John Lennon. In fact, we've got a photograph of you with John Lennon. Looking and researching this little chat, I couldn't think of any great star. I haven't seen a photograph of you with. Is there anybody you'd like to meet that you haven't met? Well, I met you now. Oh, you flatterer. <laughs> you flatterer. You like it's very odd for me, because I am, you know, I'm somebody, you know, child of the 70s and all that. And one of my favourite albums from the 70s, For Your Pleasure, Roxy Music, of course. Oh, you like Roxy in Music? In many ways, it's your album, because you are the oh, bird I'm on the front cover with the Panthers. Yes, it's really Look, Amanda Lear yeah. of Roxy Music's finest album. 
It's not a very nice uh, memory because um, the Black Panther was very fierce indeed, you know, and I said, I'm not doing the photo on Liz, this, uh, this Panther is um, under Valium or something, you know, give her a, tranqu <laughs> <laughs> a tranquilizer or some kind of Prozac, whatever. So I think they gave her a shot or something to keep her quiet and then she fell asleep or <laughs> like that. And so it was difficult then to get her up on her knees and it was freezing cold and the heels were that high. The dress by Anthony Price was spectacular. But all in all, this was the beginning of nice friendship with Brian Ferry and the whole of the group Roxy Music. And it led, you know, to other and things. And meeting David Bowie. And did David, David Bowie, was it David yeah. who encouraged you to sing? Because among your many credits, you're also a singer. Yes, um, Bowie was the first one, in fact, to say, Amanda, you should sing. And I said, well, I, I'm just a fashion model, you know, and uh, my job is modeling. And I got 25 quid for that car, by the way. <laughs> 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 and um, David said, yeah, you should sing. And I said, well, I can't sing. So he said, well, I pay for your singing classes. So he sent me to, to, to a teacher and I learned how to sing. And then eventually it was all the big beginning of the disco thing, you know, with Grace Jones and Donna Summer. And um, a record company say, yeah, you know, she's got that sort of husky voice, a la Marlene Dietrich, why don't we do a, um, a record? So I thought I'd do just one record and that was it, you know. And eventually I did um, another one and another one and another one and we sold nine, ten million copies all over the world and it was great, you know. But we've had Marlene Dietrich, not on this show of course, Sally, but playing in this very place, the Café yes, de Paris. Magic. How come you've never done the kind of one-woman show? You could tell your stories, you're a great raconteur, you, you could sing your songs. <laughs> Would you yeah, do that? Yeah, they did last night. Last night I met the Pet Shop Boys, Neil Tennant, and um, they did actually last night. They said, Amanda, why don't we do something? And I said, well, I have to think about it because Honestly, don't think about it, man. Do it. It'd be well, fantastic. Honestly, I've lost a little bit of this enthusiasm about getting on stage. You know, I did so many shows all over the world. Met Good Money. It was exciting being with a crowd. And then I got on television, like you. And you know that when you're on TV, you get all that money, all those. Be <laughs> no, Paul. I'm not on this <laughs> Let me tell you. But I must say I was spoiled on, on TV because I had my own show on Italian television and on French television. And it's true that once you're on TV, you stop, you completely lose contact with the real audience, you know, in the street and on stage. And um, I miss that a little bit. This is true. I miss a little well, you bit. You won't have to miss it. Come back on the show again when you're doing your one woman show. A fantastic privilege to meet you, the wonderful Amanda Lear. Thank you. Thank you. Amanda got...